Good morning and welcome back to uh, Irish Chippy Channel. My name is Pascal. Uh, this is uh, this is part 18 of making our uh, triamarang sailboat. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how I made the daggerboard. I laminated it from from uh, from two different types of wood, and also I made the rudder and I made a rudder case. So uh, the next job uh, that I'm going to do is I'm going to make up the case for the rudder. Uh, the rudder case uh, holds the rudder. The rudder itself comes up obviously when you're coming into shore because they're very very big. Uh, I'll show you here on this. The rudder board case, uh, it says here uh, the cheeks are to be uh, two by six millimeter. I presume two by six on each side so we'll have to laminate two pieces together for the cheeks so this is what the cheeks look like they're 20 200 mm by, uh, by two, 235 but there's an angle here an angle here so, so that uh, uh the, the tiller the, the tiller is the one that goes off it uh, the, so that the tiller uh is coming up at an angle okay and then we will we have to make a, a another tiller then extension uh, later on with some sort of uh, universal joint it says I don't know we'll worry about that one later on Okay, so I've made up the case. I also have made up the tiller and the tiller extension. Giving them a coat. They're made from mahogany. Uh, this piece is made from mahogany as well. It's just wet there. Uh, keep it. It's got two coats of epoxy already on the plywood, and they're sandwiched together. Two layers of five mm, and then a piece of mahogany here, twenty-two mm, and then this. I have these uh, pieces of wood here. These are, uh, there's two gas and mahogany. And two gas is, ma uh, what do they call Malavi, Mojave, Malavi. Uh, very hard wood and very, it's very heavy though, but they're going to be very thin. So we're going to 90% or 80% of this wood is going to be gone. So we will laminate them together. The reason we laminate them is because to give them more strength and less chance of twisting. So we will machine them out, we will join them together and when we, have up, when we have a laminated board made up then we will start shaping them. Okay, so now I've got, for, for, for the rudder on the back, uh, I, I've got, uh, I'm using one piece of mahogany in the middle and the Malavi on the sides. And this one for the dagger board which is 850 millimeters long, uh, I have five pieces. So because I want the, the Malavi is even harder than the mahogany. It's like, Malavi is like teak, something like teak, if you know teak, uh, 
Well, we call it Tugas here. They have different names in different parts of the Philippines. Now, uh, normally when I do panels and I'm doing uh, th uh, this, I would use my biscuit or, or I'd use dowels. Now, so, Ned asked me last time, uh, he's one of, one of our followers there, he asked me why I didn't use biscuits when I was making the, the mast. And the main re one reason why I didn't leave it, Ned, was because uh, the big flat surface of 60 millimeters on both w w was sandwiched together, whereas when you're making a staircase, you've only got that much and it can bend like this. That's one reason. The second and the most reason, and I'm not using it on this either, I'm just giving you an example. A biscuit is made from a wood called beech usually. Um, and what happens with a biscuit is when it hits the glue, it swells up. That's the whole point of a biscuit. It's mainly strength-wise, not so much. It's great for aligning when you're doing panels because if you have them there and you have a little bit of a bend in it, it helps take it out. But Biscuits are for water-based glue, right? When you're using this epoxy, these will not swell up like the wood with, with PVA glue or like type bond and things like that. So I'm not going to risk it. I have confidence, I have confidence in, this, uh, ep in the epoxy glue that they will be fine, these will be fine, and they will be, we will paint both sides maybe twice. Uh, and uh, so, Ned, that's the reason why I didn't use, the two reasons for the other one and the one reason for this, the other one, the, the, the mass didn't require it because the big flat surface going together like that and it's only round like that. So, anyway, these should turn out nice. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll paint them with epoxy first or just, I think I'll just uh, paint them down along with the brush and then do again and... Uh, on both all pieces and then clamp them together because uh, they will not it will not soak in so much in these as it would in the the softer wood because this is very very tight grain and uh, so uh, we'll we'll laminate them up together like we will I'm not going to show you all the laminating yeah the, I, I will give you a link to a video where I made all the stair uh, steps for my stairs where we were doing piles of laminating okay so we uh, we glued these up uh, we, we glued them up with the epoxy and we clamped them up overnight and they, they're fine now for taking off the clamps. Uh, we'll put one sideways if you think it's going to bend a little bit, but if you have enough allowance, you can let it, let it actually bend a little bit this way. It means that the surfaces are more flat against one another. So I also, we, this is uh, finished now, it just needs to be painted up, right? This is the case for, for the rudder. Uh, and we also made up the yard the yard and the, and the boom. So uh, I'll just take off these now and we'll run the, the um, we'll take off the clamps and we'll run them through the planar thicknesser and then we will have to start uh, making them into, shaping them into an aerofoil. Okay, so they came out nice and they're nice and smooth. Uh, they're different size. This one is, uh, what's this one going down to 18 and this one is 21. That's the measurement I do. Uh, the, the, the case for this is 20, so th it needs a little bit of freedom. It's not quite, it's not quite 18, but... Uh, so what we have to do is we have to make what's called an aerofile. You know what an aerofile is, right? For both of them. An aerofile is something like this. Do you see this here? Um, there. Can you see this here? That's an aerofile. That's the aerofile for this. And the aerofile for this is the very same, except it's different sizes, of course. So how do we do that? Uh, you're going to have to slope off this. I'm thinking I will just saw this at the angle of the, the... The front part of the aerofile is no problem. Look, we can do this part here uh, very easy with the plane. Uh, but this one is going down and almost to a pint down here. It shows it going to a pint. I am not going to put it to a pint. I'm going to leave it three, or three millimeter at the back. The more you leave it at the back, fine at the back, the more efficient, of course, it's going to be because the more of an aerofile it's going to be. But the front part of it is going to be pretty easy to do. So what we do is we will saw down, uh, we will saw, we will saw down the angle. So uh, the Suke, this full size one, you can use a compact as well. I usually use the compact, but it's finer than uh, this is the Suke. Or sorry, it's finer than the Ryobi, this saw. I'm sure a lot of you I see have Ryobis there. This is finer, it's more for dovetails. 
and you take your time we're only doing a few little cuts here this is going to be rounded off later so don't worry about it too much just don't go down past the line on either here or there and then we will do that on all uh, the two sides on this and the two sides on this and then we'll start planing it up uh, we'll use a combination of uh, big plane small plane and chisel and we will get this uh, this slope out like this and uh, it's going to take a while we'll be doing mostly against the grain because it's much easier to do it against the grain like that I have a, maybe a bit too much bite on it at the moment I'll turn that down a bit when I get a, a good chunk of it out make sure you don't go below the line on the bottom you're aiming for this line and this line here this is a slow job this is going to take about a to do this one and this one is going to take nearly an hour I'd say okay they came out okay there was an awful amount of work in them uh, I just gave them one uh, I was just giving them one coat there of, of ep uh, epoxy laminating epoxy and we'll give them a sanding and then another coat they are fine they're good yeah they but there was a lot of work in planing them a lot most people would use a, a angle grinder with a uh, disc on it for for taking out a lot of heavy wood at a time but uh, no I'm happy with them uh, and I'm not going to fiber glass them I don't see any reason why I would fiber glass them and it might be messy to fiber glass them so we we have to make a circle on this now and then when it's down it's like this so we will uh, we will make a we will make a semicircle Okay, so what I done was I put an eight inch hole in it so uh, to make sure I was exactly right and we put the drill bit in and it's pivoting uh, nicely. Uh, you don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight. So what we're going to do then is we're going to drill a big hole like and we're going to make uh, a bushing from the epoxy like we did in the, in the beams going across in, in the ACAS. Uh, so we will probably make a 5 8 inch hole then fill it with epoxy and then drill it out with we, It says use a 6 millimeter bolt, uh, but I don't have a stainless steel one long enough It's just slightly short so I'll use an 8 millimeter and uh, this one and I'll put on washer and I'll put on a lot I don't have lock knots, but I have one like this We will put, we can put super glue on it if we want to or something we can to stop it for, uh, Possibly coming off so I'm just going to drill these out like we did before, I put a lump of wood in here so that uh, it won't break through here when I'm coming through here and uh, I think it's in the right place, yeah. And uh, we'll just drill them out and we will uh, fill them with epoxy and then we'll start making the hinge, the hinge for this. The hinge for this, uh, I'll get John, my friend down the road to, to, to weld them up. We'll cut up from an old tank there. So I'll just drill them out. Cutting. Okay, so now we have uh, we have made up our uh, our case is done. Our epoxy is in the middle of it. You can see it there, there, and we're going to drill through that, and we're going to drill through that in this. And we're going to put in our eight millimeter bolt and tear on this. We will drill the center of this one first with a smaller bit, one eight, I think, and to make sure. Uh, this one, I'll just, <laughs> our dagger board came out good as well, mm, okay, 
That's the tiller extension. Uh, I'm going to do a little tiny hole here and we'll see where that goes. Now that worked out very good. Can you see it there? Almost dead in the center. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, I'm going to use my Fostner bit and I'm going to drill uh, these out. This one, it's not exactly, but it's not even one millimeter off with where I was and the, I didn't use the sandpaper the first time. So we're going to drill these out now. Rest it and then push that down and then lift it back up again and then turn it on and then we'll drill down through it. And then through. This is held with a, a rope. It's, it's, it's pulled, held down with a rope. We put a little eye on it. Well, according to, uh, according to the drawing. I think this is going to be held in with glue. Now, so that's the way this is going to be. There'll be a rope, a hole here. And there'll be an eye here and that will hold it up and it will be tied in and then you can release it in there it will be on a cleat here and that will hold it down and then pulling it up we'll have another rope like that so that's my uh, rudder case finished now we're going to make uh, we're going to make uh, hinges for for this and um, we need pieces of stainless steel now this is stainless steel I got from this see this old tank I have out here uh, it was leaking with the pressure tank and we use it for stainless steel anytime we flatten it out and we can cut from it. This plate, I'll put one plate, one plate I'll put on the, on the transom and we will put two pieces like this coming out on it. I'll get John to weld them, John is, uh, uh, will weld these on, we'll have a hole in them, we'll round them off and it'll be a hinge. On the rudder board case then we will put the strap like this this will bend around it we will bend them around that so first thing we do is we clean them all up here on the grinder and we will have our, our bar as well and we will put a stopper on the end of this my friend down the road John uh, John uh, welded these up for me with his TIG welder very hard to weld very thin this is uh, uh, but I want light weight uh, John is the one I built the boat for, the, the other boat. Here's the boat. So I can line it up there. This is, this is us working now, look. Isn't that nice? Good? Okay. So that's the way it will work. Uh, we, will, we will tap these in and we will align everything. I have didn't put the washers in the right place there just now. I'll put a washer between each one of them. And then what I will do is I will mark where the screws are going in these and we will drill them out uh, in the drill press and countersink. And then we will mark them and we will fit them to this. Okay, so now we have, uh, I have fitted, this is my hinge system. I will put a different type of a pin in here on the top. We'll also put an insurance here that we will uh, tie this to this in case this falls out or whatever we will replace this with. Uh, we decided to keep this, we, we, we put epoxy on it and then we put polyurethane on it. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure about holding it down whether we're going to use a rope here and a little eye here like in the drawing or a bungee, we could use a bungee elastic here to hold it down. And when we will pull it up, I will have an eye here for sure for pulling it up and a hole in it through it here that will pull it up like this. So when we're coming into shore. But, uh, so this is, uh, this is what it will be like when, you, when, we are, uh, when we're coming into shore. It'll be held up like this. And it will be held down like this when we're sailing. So the aerofile, it came out nice enough now. Uh, the, the, it came out nice. We have a, a, what's called a tiller extension. This is the tiller because we'll be sitting up there. The, this will be an extension. We will have a universal joint on this. I was going to make one from wood, but I think I will, 
this is going to go on top now because of this beam so we'll have a universal joint up here so it can bend anyway like this and we can have it like this controlling it from different places so that's our rudder finished and we also made uh, the dagger board the dagger board goes down through the boat uh, I made it uh, we, you saw me making it we finished it uh, two coats of polyurethane over the epoxy uh, and uh, it's coming in a bit heavy it's coming in at I'll put it down through here you can see it there on the bottom it's it extends down about two foot below the boat and of course it keeps the boat in a straight line so the boat won't be sailing sideways uh, it, it weighs two kilos 2.3 kilos uh, I just weighed it there uh, just a few minutes ago uh, how it will be held up I think it's going to be held up uh, uh, via pulley to the mast something like that I'm sure or we will make something to hold it up this is my fear non being a non sailor my fear is that I am going to uh, I'm going to leave this down and I'm coming in and we've really low tide today actually there's no there's, you couldn't even go out in the boat now even without the dagger board because it's called Hunasan and that means that it's like completely you have to walk out to the reef which is about 150 meters out or 100 meters out and that's where the reef starts so uh, my fear is I'm going to hit this off something so I'm going to make something <laughs> uh, that maybe if it hits off something it'll pop up some of the way right so uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this video today uh, uh, I have the sail there I don't have the hardware but I'm going making the amas in the next uh, that's the two small boats or outriggers they're called amas we're, we're going to start making them I'm going to start making them now thank you again for watching